please join me in the Christian greeting. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. With you. And please stand for the call of your church. People of God, bless the Lord. Bless God's holy name. For us as the tree, three heavens are high above the earth. So praise God. Our hymn of praises, blessed be the tide of time. No, it's we gather together. together. God, our source and our salvation, in love you made us, and by love you have redeemed us. Make your love for us bear fruit in our forgiveness of others, that in this life we may know your well-embracing compassion, and in the world to come receive the everlasting joy of fellowship you share with your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As loving parents have compassion for their children, God has a compassion for us. Confident in God's love, let us confess our sins together. Loving God, we confess that we have failed in harmony with our sisters and brothers. We have been self-righteous in our attitudes, closed-minded in our beliefs and judgmental in our opinions. We have shunned those whose ways we do not understand, and we have despised those who do not endorse our conditions. Let us conclude our prayer of confession together. Forgive our sins of discord and conceit, and heal our divisiveness and quarreling. Help us to be charitable in our regard for others, that we may dwell in peace with Christ, who is Lord of all. Amen. Friends, the Lord is merciful and gracious. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks. Thanks be to God.
Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, open our understanding that we may receive the word of life. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from Psalm 103, verses 8 to 13. We will be reading in response to I'll read the odd verses, and you will read the even verses. Notice that you are reading first. Let us read the word of the Lord. Lord, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love, and abundant in mercy. Lord, the Lord is good, his mercy. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. Because he does not accuse us, our sins deserve, or will pay us according to our own. As far as the east is from the west, so as for as high, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he has been with us, as a As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. This ends our Old Testament reading. Our gospel reading, we continue with Matthew, Matthew 18, verses 21 through 35. Hear the word of the Lord. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brothers and sisters who sin against us? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay you back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown in prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told, <coughs> excuse me, and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of us unless we forgive our brothers and sisters from this is the word of the Lord. Okay, Riley.
is all about forgiveness. A statement that may produce some stifled yawns in you sitting out there today thinking, oh, not that again, forgiveness. Does that mean that God cancel is canceling our debts? A kind of religious bookkeeping exercise? That's nice, but not very exciting. God can cancel our debts, and then we can just get on with our life. Well, that's not exactly what God is saying, and Jesus is saying. In fact, not at all. The gospel is about the radical, incredible forgiveness of God. A forgiveness that can transform you and make you not only a forgiven, but a forgiving person. If that's not exciting, look at the alternative. Peter comes to Jesus with the question, how often do I have to forgive someone who hurts me? It's a natural question. And Peter suggests what seems like a generous answer. Seven times? It is probably more generous than we feel comfortable with, but Jesus tops him. Not seven times, but 77. Some translations say 70 times seven, which is 490. But the Greek also can mean 77, and that is more likely, as we will see. Forgiving 77 times instead of seven, does that mean that Jesus is just well, let's see, 11 times more than forgiving that Peter did? No, it means more than that. Jesus' answer carries us back to a few verses before the flood story in Genesis at the dawn of history. There have been some quarrels and some injury, and the Bible gives us a bit from a primitive song of vengeance by a man named Lamech. If Cain is avenged sevenfold, truly may Lamach seventy-sevenfold. Unlimited revenge? If you step on my toe, I will burn your house down and massacre your family? Primitive or not, we hear about that kind of thing on the news all the time. The Old Testament law tries to control that and puts limits on retribution. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. People sometimes think that of that as a harsh law, but it sets limits. If you knock my tooth out, I'm not allowed to kill you, but I can avenge you by knocking your tooth out. It is a civilized law that seems natural and fair to many people. The world would be a better place if we would observe such limits. But Jesus goes beyond what seems natural. He does not just put a limit on revenge, but gets rid of it. Jesus turns that old song of vengeance on its head. Not forgiveness, just seven times, but 77. Instead of unlimited payback, there is to be unlimited forgiveness. How is that possible? Revenge seems all too much like common sense. Why? Even talking about something that seems so much out of sync with the way we feel and the way the world seems to work today. In answer to our question, Jesus tells a story. The point of this story is your forgiveness is to be inspired by and flow by from God's forgiveness to you. Let me repeat that, that's very important. Your forgiveness is to be inspired by and flow from God's forgiveness of you. That is where we've got to start. God's forgiveness is unlimited. God is so far from taking revenge, the human sin, that he let the revenge be taken upon himself, he takes the consequence of sin upon himself upon the cross. We are the ones who have sinned against God, but God accepts the penalty. We are forgiven in an unimaginably generous, undeserved way, and are then called to live as a forgiven people. Jesus' story about the king and the two ser servants illustrates
illustrates this in a negative way. It shows what happens if God's tremendous generous forgiveness is not eternalized, if it is just treated as a matter of bookkeeping and does not change the life of the person who receives it. The king starts with the servant who owes him 10,000 talents, a fantastic amount of money. It misses the point to try to lay, translate it into many billions of dollars because it is beyond any real amount of money, as when we say zillions of dollars. It is beyond anything that the servant could actually pay. And to picture him as being called to pay that much is kind of a joke. But the real joke is that he imagines that he can pay it. Just give him a little more time. I know I owe the gross national debt, but I can save it out of my lunch money next week. That is where the human problem begins. We do not realize the seriousness of sin. It is far more weighty matter than breaking a rule or offending against the dignity of some powerful war. Sin separates us from God, and that means we are separated from the source of our life, the source of our very being. To appreciate the weight of sin, and therefore the value of forgiveness. Look at the cross. It is there that the Son of God suffers that separation from the source of life. Outcast by humanity, the skies darkened, crying out that he is forsaken by God. God himself is brought to the breaking point by the weight of sin, mine and yours. Sin is so deadly that it was not to be expected that Jesus would ever live again. His resurrection from the dead is no more marvelous than the forgiveness of our sins and reconciliation with God that those events brought upon. Well, the first servant in the story has his grotesquely huge debt forgiven, but maybe it is significant that we are not told that he did not even thank the Lord. He does go internalize forgive. He does not internalize forgiveness, does not allow it to change the way he sees the world or the way he acts. Maybe as he backs out of the king's presence, he thinks, hmm, what a sucker. He goes out and finds a fellow servant who owes him a few hundred dollars. <coughs> Apparently, he does not just run into him, but searches him out. He grabs him by the throat, demands payment, and refuses to listen to his pleas for a little more time. No forgiveness there. But the king hears about it. God is unimaginably generous. But do not mess with God. If you think you can play God for a sucker, if you just want a formal pardon so that you can go on living as you always have, refusing to live as a person who has been forgiven, you are out of luck. That attitude would mean that you refuse to be reconciled to God in spite of what God has done for you. Do not mess with the one who knows your heart and mind. It is easy to challenge this idea of forgiving others and striving even for unlimited forgiveness. Can it work? Is it realistic? But look around at the world in which grudges and retribution are standard operating procedure and ask yourself, how well is this working? Is this realistic? We all live in an atmosphere of hurt feelings and suspicions and desires to get even. Whole nations exchange vengeance with one another over things that happened years or generations ago. Husbands and wives cannot forgive one another. And children harbor resentment of parents. Sometimes there are understandable reasons for hard feelings, but sometimes not. By any consideration of those reasons get swallowed up in the desire to keep on resenting and to hurt the person who hurt me. Think 
picture the slogans we hear. Do not get mad, get even. It is payback time. The air is polluted, but God has begun a cleanup of our spiritual environment, bringing us into a petrified atmosphere of forgiveness. It smells strange at first, just the way the fresh air of the countryside seems strange to a person who has been living in a smoggy city. We feel it as if we have to rush back to get our toxic fit fix. But breath in the but breathe in the clean air. Hear Jesus tell sinners that they are forgiven. Hear the church proclaim that for Christ's sake, God has forgiven us all of our guilty secrets, all of the faults we try to rationalize away, all of the sins that we do not even realize we've committed, things done that we should never have done, and things we should have done that we have not are forgiven. You are free of them, beginning by accepting the amazing forgiveness of God, which means at the same time being reconciled with God. Breathe it in and let it cleanse your system. It is a life-giving and life-changing message. With forgiveness, you get everything else. As Martin Luther put it, where we have the forgiveness of sins, we have life and salvation. Since we are a people who live by God's forgiveness and acceptance, we can be forgiving people. That can be hard. There's no point in pretending that forgiveness is easy or just comes naturally to us. It may seem impossible sometimes, but through Christ, God has brought us into a new spiritual environment in which it can happen because we have first been forgiven. We can pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and mean it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of response is forgive our sins as we forgive. Thank you. 
sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Our prayers of the people today. We haven't done this. Before. I don't have it in your bulletin, so let's see if you can remember it. Loving God, here you will say, hear our prayer. Let's practice it. I'll say, loving God, and you will say, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, heal diseases, relieve distress, and return to many the joy of salvation. We particularly pray for Dale and Louise, Maddie, Tammy, Cindy, Nora, Lou, Jan, Margaret, Chris, Zoe, Bobby, Garrett, Kelly, Sharon, Phil, Alan, Mark, John, related to the Greens, Gail's friend Holly, Phil's Reed's daughter Paula, Becky, Tim and Lou's daughter Michelle and son Michael, as well as Lou's friends Anita and Debbie, Peggy, Ryan's grandmother and Aunt Diane, Claire's husband Carl, Gail and Bill, Jack and Jill, Bruce and Sally, Mila's friends Mrs. Campbell, Keith and their sister Elizabeth. Loving God, we pray for all who suffer the violence of war or natural disaster. Bring an end to violence that destroys human flourishing. Help us to live in peace with our neighbor and enable us to dwell in harmony with the earth. Loving God, we pray for children and for all who depend upon the support of others. Protect the vulnerable, shelter the weak, and give strength and wisdom to those who care for them. Loving God, yeah. we pray for elected officials and civil servants. Stir up in them a desire for justice. Enable them to fulfill their responsibilities with integrity and drive from them any spirit of selfish gain. Loving God, yeah. we pray for pastors, teachers, and all the saints who led your church. Grant them wisdom to know your truth and give them courage to live as faithful disciples of Jesus. Loving God, yeah. loving God, yeah. you have crowned us with, the steadfast, with steadfast love and mercy. Receive our prayers and help us to trust your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, we pray, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom.
prayer of dedication found in your bulletin. Almighty God, receive these gifts that we offer with grateful hearts and use our lives for the ministry of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our ascending hymn is Blessed Be the Tie that Binds. destroys human flourishing. Help us to live in peace with our neighbor and enable us to dwell in harmony with the earth, 
loving God, we pray for children and for all who depend upon the support of others. Protect the vulnerable, shelter the weak, and give strength and wisdom to those who care for them. Loving God, we pray for elected officials and civil servants. Stir up in them a desire for justice. Enable them to fulfill their responsibilities with integrity and drive from them any spirit of selfish gain. Loving God, we pray for pastors, teachers, and all the saints who led your church. Grant them wisdom to know your truth and give them courage to live as faithful disciples of Jesus. Loving God, loving God, you have crowned us with, the steadfast, with steadfast love and mercy. Receive our prayers and help us to trust your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, we pray, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. found in your bulletin. Almighty God, receive these gifts that we offer with grateful hearts and use our lives for the ministry of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our ascending hymn is Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. 